Ensign. I live in Stockton, California, in the Central Valley of California, one of the fastest growing parts of the United States and certainly the fastest growing part of California. Um, this project that Scott Chacon and I are working on is to begin to document what some of the challenges are in this very fast growing part of the country. And there are many challenges. It's a wonderful place to live. It's one of the most diverse places in the country. We have more um, people of different ethnic groups living here in Stockton than now any other city in the country. But with that wonderful richness and diversity come some enormous challenges. When I was growing up and I would think about poverty, um, the area of the country that I would hear a lot about was Appalachia in West Virginia. There's some recent data out from the Congressional Research Service, which is the nonpartisan arm of Congress, that says in, in 2006, the area with the highest poverty in the country isn't in West Virginia anymore. It's right here in our backyard in the San Joaquin County. One of the reasons the U.S. has been so competitive, and certainly was in the 20th century, is that we had one of the best public education systems in the world. A lot of those educational systems are crumbling, and one of the greatest challenges here in the San Joaquin Valley is education. Again, the challenge and the, and the diversity of the people who live here um, also brings some challenges about depending on the school we're looking at, between a half and two-thirds of the children in our school are what we call English language learners. We haven't, as a country and a state, recognized the challenges that those young children face when they're in school and not necessarily understanding what their teachers are talking about. If you look at the San Joaquin as a state rather than just the valley, the educational attainment in the San Joaquin is below Mississippi. If we were a state then, we would be 48th in educational performance. That's incredibly important in this century because this is the century of globalization. And we know that the challenges from India and China have begun. And even though many in those countries are obviously still very poor, their educational systems are coming online faster than anyone thought. Um, and so we're really falling behind in terms of educating young people for the challenges of this century, educating them in math and science, and making sure they have the knowledge, skill, and competencies to have good jobs, to have good lives. And so that's pr probably one of the most important challenges here in the Valley. The other is health care. Certainly at the national level, we face tremendous challenges with health care. The estimates vary widely, but between 40 and 50 million people in this country don't have access to health care. Well, in the San Joaquin, the, the, the most troubling indicator of this um, not having access to health care is the infant mortality rate. The infant mortality rate tells us how many uh, deaths per 100,000 births exist. We have the highest infant mortality rate here in the valley in the country, and that's totally unacceptable. The rates here for infant mortality compare to many very poor third world countries. Um, that, that tells us a lot then about the lack of physical infrastructure, the lack of commitment to public, public health and also public education, that people living in this valley don't have access to health care. There's another way we can look at health care, and that's at asthma. Um, nationally, the rates of asthma have been increasing for the last decade. It's hard to pin down why this is happening, whether um, it's being reported more or there, if, whether there are significant environmental relationships between asthma and air quality, for example. Once again, when you look at the San Joaquin Valley, we have some of the worst pollution in the country. We vie for first and second place for ozone pollution with Los Angeles and Houston. Not something you want to be um, at the top of that list for. Because of that, many believe that our very high asthma rates are related to those ozone problems. Um, so the environmental issues here are really very significant, but it isn't just air quality. It's water also. We are surrounded by this very rich delta, um, about 1,300 miles of water that surrounds the San Joaquin. Up until about a decade ago, that was a healthy um, water system. 
Recently, many scientists have become very concerned because the, not only is the water quality declining, but the, the, the ecosystems are also being destroyed. This is due to pesticide runoff. The San Joaquin Valley is still heavily agricultural. In fact, it's the richest agricultural land in the world, second only to the Nile Valley in Egypt. So we're at a crossroads here in the San Joaquin, still primarily agricultural, but with tremendous growth from the Bay Area because housing in that area has become so prohibitively expensive. Um, in the last year, 11,000 new homes were built here in the Valley. So the, the good thing is that we do still have affordable health care, affordable housing for people, but because of the building and the construction, we're impacting the environment even more. The one issue we haven't really talked about is immigration. This is probably the one area of the country where there are more immigrants than any other part of the country. It, pre it presents both challenges, I believe, and wonderful opportunities. Many of the immigrants who have come here have come because the economic problems in their countries are so large. Should we allow them in? Well, most of them are doing work that many Americans really wouldn't want to do. Every day I drive up I-5 and see people in the field doing work that I did for one day and I was sore for weeks. I don't know how people do that work daily um, and their families do. People are coming here like immigrants have come to America since the beginning of our history to make a better life for themselves and their family. These people are here. We need to make sure they're integrated into our country um, in every possible way. One of the reasons it's so important our educational systems improve. One of the parts that we will um, learn a lot about, I think, Scott and I, is we're going to go out to the immigrant camps. I know people think that there aren't any camps anymore in this country. Yes, there are immigrant camps. We'll go out and we'll interview some of those people and talk to them about what their lives are like and what it would mean for them to have a living wage rather than the wages we're paying them. So when you put this all together, the, the fastest growing part of California, our region will increase by 30% in the next five years. That's enormous growth that no one's really prepared for. So you've got the growth, and you combine that with enormous challenges to our educational system, um, already huge problems of access to the healthcare system, environmental issues um, with air and water quality affecting everyone every day that we're really not paying any attention to. So that's one of the challenges of this little project, is to begin documenting what's happening here in the valley. And like the rest of the country, and like the country at the beginning, um, the most active groups are, are these non-governmental organizations. People coming together in what de Tocqueville called in 1835 associations. In fact, when he traveled America, the very beginning of our history, he said that he'd never seen a country where people come together to solve problems. He called them associations at the time. In the last few decades, we've seen an explosion of non-governmental organizations, not just in the US, but around the world, particularly in third world countries. And they've arisen often where, in places where governments are not paying attention to issues, in human rights, in healthcare, in poverty reduction. Well, we're seeing very much the same thing here in this valley. Government hasn't responded to our challenges, to our problems. So there are wonderful people working um, to make the educational system better, the healthcare system, water, the environment, all of those issues. And we're going to be meeting with them and talking to them and getting their stories. That's why this project is called Democracy Stories. All of us need to focus on these issues. I believe this is the future of our country, to make sure that every citizen has access to health care, has a good education, has clean air and water. That's the basis of what will make this country continue to be competitive in the 21st century. So I hope that you enjoy these films. This is Scott's idea to begin this project, and it's a wonderful project to begin talking to people who are making a difference in the San Joaquin Valley.